To help unpack the situation is Dr. Balkan Devlin, foreign policy expert and senior fellow at the McDonald Laurier Institute. Dr. Devlin, welcome to Forum Daily. Thanks for having me. So give us a, a quick update on the situation along the Ukraine-Russia border today. Um, so there is about 100,000 Russian troops that are, that are massed um, on, on, the, on the border with Ukraine, uh, as well as in, in the occupied uh, Crimea. Um, and this has been going on since April. So the, there were you know, troop uh, increases in the massing of troops in the border uh, from April, and then there were Zapad exercises uh, in early September uh, that went through. But now we, what we are right now seeing is not only sort of a, a small increase in the number of troops from about 80,000 to maybe 100,000, but also positioning them uh, in, in what would one would consider a more offensive posture. And that is what is really, really troubling. And we're seeing a lot of concerns around Russia's presence here. But uh, Russia at the same time is saying allegations of an attack are inflammatory and has complained about actual NATO activity in the region. So uh, let's uh, dig in deeper here. Uh, why is the North Atlantic Treaty Organization involved in the Black Sea region in the first place? Well, first, there are you know, three NATO members uh, that are you know, littoral states in the Black Sea, Turkey, Romania, and, and Bulgaria. Um, and we do also have um, NATO partners, uh, such as Ukraine and Georgia, uh, that are um, in the Black Sea. So it is, in a way, Black Sea is a border, is an area that is of, of major concern uh, for NATO. Um, so that's number one. Number two is, of course, there are uh, increasing sort of institutional ties and bilateral ties with different NATO members, including Canada, uh, with Ukraine. For example, um, we do have a mission, Operation Unifier, uh, that does support military training uh, in Ukraine. So it is a concern of what is going on over there for us too. And Russia has been stepping on a lot of toes in terms of the Ukraine. It's been involved in a separatist insurgency in eastern Ukraine and annexed Crimea in 2014. Uh, so do you think a full-blown Russian invasion of Ukraine is likely, Doctor? Um, <laughs> Two things, maybe to start with, the, the so-called insurgency is primarily Russian directed and you know, organized and supported by the Russian Federation. So those um, you know, puppet uh, regimes that they form up in, in Donbass, in Eastern Ukraine, that are under occupation is very much sort of dependent on, on, on Russian support. Uh, without that, 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 that wouldn't be such a, uh, such a situation. Uh, number two, when you look at the probability of, uh, of a war, uh, for the short term, you know, maybe to the new year or, 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 or around, I would say that is a low probability, maybe five to 10%. Primarily because uh, we do not see the specific sort of imminent signs of action coming from troop movements and so on and so forth. But in the longer term, say going over the winter and the spring, that there is 20 to 25 percent, you know, one in five to one in four chance that there might be military action uh, instigated by Russia in invasion. Uh, its extent to which uh, is is debatable and is concerning, uh, but that's that's where we are. All right, doctor, just about a minute left here, but I want to jump to a letter you previously wrote to the McDonald Laurier Institute. Uh, now, in this letter, you said that Russia poses a threat to international world order along with China. So some very strong words there, doctor. Uh, can you unpack these words for us, uh, for our viewers here? Sure. Um, so there are basically two things that we need to be concerned about. Both China and Russia as authoritarian regimes would like to undermine the rules-based international order because those order, the, 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 the particular set, uh, represents to them a, a threat uh, to their regime. So they would like to reshape the uh, rules-based international order uh, to their liking that will make it safe uh, for the authoritarian uh, regimes in Beijing and, and Moscow. And therefore, they are engaging in subversion and political warfare um, against, against the Western countries, including uh, election interference, including carrying out assassinations in the case of Russia, or you know, naked uh, territorial aggression, as in the case of Russia, uh, when they do uh, invade uh, Ukraine and illegally annex uh, Crimea in 2014. So their presence and their constant undermining of the order represents a threat to, uh, to that international order and to Canada, which very much uh, benefited from a stable rules-based international order. 